hogging camp with white crockery on the cookhouse table and instead of ten plates. Look at that. Even sheets, by God. Mail and newspapers almost every day. Hot showers, electric light, even telephones. That's progress, partner. Before I get to highlining this here story, I want to set you straight about timber tramps and logging. Logging is a mighty fine profession, and timber tramps are the men that follow it. It's true, we never stay long in one place for one reason or another, but we give a good day's work for the pay while we're there. Well, my partner Matt Jury and me was riding the herds on this pack of billy goats for weeks, trying to make loggers out of them. Till all of a sudden, the law of averages started to catch up. Now, we had a good reason for quitting this last camp, but it sure come at an opportune time. Well, you sure as hell aren't breeding any new ones. Besides, there's a saying in the logging camps that's got a lot of meaning. Deacon, get packed! When they start calling you by your first name, it's time to move on. And moving on is what a timber tramp does most of. Yes, sir, we were on our way to a mighty exciting new place. Of course, Matt didn't know it yet. I figured to get him mellowed up a mite before spring and Corey's letter on him. Oh, say, I gotta show you this new picture of my two boys. They're going to school down in San Francisco now, doing real fine. Oh, say, Susie, would you get me some change for the jukebox? I need a little noise and commotion in here to sort of hone up my thirst. Thank you. Is that old timber tramp really up to little kids like this? If he does, he misplaced them 30 or 40 years ago. He probably cut that picture out of some barbershop magazine. be 70 again. Hi, mister. You need a drinking buddy? Mm, so what, well, do I owe this unexpected pleasure. Oh, maybe I'm a social worker. Just here to see that you loggers have a real good time. Well, that's mighty kind of you, miss. I am having a very difficult time getting rid of my money. <laughs> hey, you're a cute little thing. I have some champagne at my place. <laughs> You better go along, honey. Okay, Pops. But what's all the money for? For the compliment. So long, baby. You getting a job done? Uh, it's too gall danged hard getting rid of it anymore. I'm going to save my money on the next show. Maybe buy me a nice little general store over in Puyallup or Maple Valley and settle down. Deacon, you're a loner, a drifter, a timber tramp. You ain't ever going to sink roots. Oh, man, kind of be puts his mind to it. How about you, Matt? Well, I guess a man can't help dreaming sometimes. Remember last year, that little town in Idaho we got so excited about, quit and headed for it? And by the time we got there, we heard so much about it, we didn't even stop, just kept right on going. Well, the time might come when you can't heft a chainsaw or swing an axe anymore. What then? Well, then I'll chew the damn trees down like a termite. Now, let's quit wasting time. We got a hell of a lot of cash to drink up. Well, this was as good a time as ever to spring Corey's letter. Here goes. Say, Matt, I, I got this letter a couple of days ago from a woman. Oh, I ain't interested. 
from Alaska. Well, I especially ain't interested in Eskimo women. She's no Eskimo. She runs a logging camp. Business belongs to her husband, but he got himself killed about a year ago. She's been trying to carry on. She needs help bad. There's a sawmill outfit that's just aching to take over her whole business. Well, next to female loggers, I care a damn sight less about sliver pickers. They're giving this woman a mighty rough time, Matt. They killed her husband with a runaway logging truck. Then they said it was an accident. And they were putting the squeeze on at the bank. And they're cheating her on the board feet she's delivering. Well, just, uh, just uh, let me uh, read you uh, part of this uh, letter, man. This uh, could be a real old-time logging show, Deacon. The kind you used to say was gone forever. Now, first of all, the timber here is a real challenge. You need a sky hook just to hang on the side of the mountains to get at our big ones. We're cutting real nice saw timber, but the mill is paying us for pulp logs at half price and cheapness even on that. Our camp here are really different. Built right on log rafts in the water. Muck houses, cook houses, and everything. Worst of all, Deacon, they're sabotaging my camp. In the last month, they've wrecked two cats and eight logging trucks, and last week, a whole raft of logs was cut loose, towed around the island so the tide would wash it up against the glacier walls. There wasn't a log left to salvage by morning. $20,000 gone in one night's dirty work. I need help, Deacon. Where is this place? Uh, how did you know? Sounds like a real nice logging camp, don't it? <laughs> what woman you know would write to you from Alaska? Now, Matt, I'm just about to tell you, listen, Corey. You just didn't happen to hear from her. You've been suckering me into this, you greasy mouth, sneaky old now, son of... be angry and sin not. Uh, don't let the sun go down upon thy wrath. Second verse, Deuteronomy. Stand up. What for? Because I want the biggest one in the room. Oh, why don't you go away, bro? You're already drunk and we just working on it. I said, stand up! You're the biggest spear chucker I've ever seen. I hope you brought your lunch. I'm going to work your butt overtime. Point and one on me. If you really got a pipeline to the big hook tender, get him a message. I need help right now. The Lord helps those who help themselves. Now get in there and win. Next time, I'm going to unscrew your neck and feed it to the dogs.
Sorry, Corky. It's time for this sinner to repent. Hallelujah, brother! How tall are you, anyway? Right now, the same height as you. My jury. Redwood Rosenblum. Is you the black boomer? That's what they call me. Vegan, if we're gonna go to Alaska. We can get a crew at Limey Lills. Alaska? If that doesn't mean gold, my name ain't Redwood Rosenblum. Hey, fella! Blimey, Lewis. Matt! The best place in the Northwest to pick up a crew. Good to see you. It looked like we'd hit the jackpot, all right. Didn't take long to find out Sweet Larson was in jail and Hallback was up to his old tricks of giving Lil's girls a bad time. Big push! And the deacon to pray for our souls. Now he can have us a real high lead show. And Matt wants to take you up on a job with him. A job? Are you kidding? No way. I ain't going back to work until I'm broke. Deacon, get his clothes. Sweet, old oh, man. Hey, sweet. So you're the ones who sprung me. Funny, the judge said no bail. How'd you know I was in here? Now, if volunteering for the Alaska show surprised the haul back Jack some, it didn't do any the less for Sweet Larson. Well, you don't owe me any favors. Now, we couldn't stand the thought of a top money fella tramp like you doing six months hard labor for the state for free. Thanks. Next time you're in jail, I hope I'm out so I can return the favor. Matt and Swede plain rubbed each other wrong. They'd been looking to have it out for years. So we was the last ones this side of Haiti Swede would have expected to spring him. The judge released you to my custody. Uh, I might have known it was a catch. Well, the catch is I promised his honor to get you the hell out of his state right now. Suits me, I'll catch a plane to Reno. Borough of Frisco. Can't do that, Swede. Judge says you gotta go with us or back in jail. And we're going to Alaska. Alaska? Yeah, I'm a choker setter. Get your hair cut. 
Why, you think that'll help me get more log? It'll help save your life. Well, that's okay. I can live with my hair the way it is. <laughs> I'm the camp push now, and I don't put up with long hairs. You can't see what you're doing. You get yourself killed, or even worse, you get a good man killed. Now you shave and cut that hair, or else pack your bag and get out. You ever hear it asking? I did. I just forgot to say please. You want a hand, kid? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> You sure made a big splash with the ball set, kid. Shame to spoil that reflection. I was afraid to spit on it. <laughs> Here you go. All right. Who's a big muscle man? We got plenty of muscle around here. Hope we were getting some brains. And he's got us here. He's right, you know. Long hair can be dangerous in the woods. Yeah, so how come Daniel Boone never killed himself? <laughs> I just let the kid know that he was seeing the sweeter side of your nature. I don't need you putting me up. I handle the man, I give the orders, no questions asked. Now you get that straight right now. Well, he made an understandable mistake thinking that I was a big push. Uh, just because I look like the boss, that doesn't mean that I'm trying to buck for your job. Sweet. I'm gonna whittle your tail down to the bone working with me. Fine. The beach talking to you, so let's just keep it that way, huh? Get the new men settled in the bunkhouse. I'll check in. Hi. I'm shooting. I'm the cook. I do the cooking. I'll show you where the boss is. All right. There's the boss. But I've never seen her old get Oh, Gussie doesn't like that before. I can find my way from here. For years, I wondered how it would be seeing you again. I had plenty of time to think up 50 real mean ways of telling you off. Try one if it'll help. You're looking good, Corey. Awful good. I always knew you'd go blind, working in the sun all day without sunglasses. And a logger once told me that all Eskimo women were fat and greased up with whale oil. Most loggers in the lower 48 don't know much about Alaska. Or women. Matt, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming. Now, I, I was halfway here before I found out it was your camp I was coming to. Well, I appreciate it anyway. Want to come in for coffee while I give you the bad news? It was mighty good just to see Matt and Corey together again after all these years. And it was a good feeling to know we was needed. And Richards and Fraser are making them all shorter by the minute. Are those the sawmill owners? They really itch to take over this operation. They carry a lot of weight. Well, we can squeeze time and stretch money, but I gotta have men. I just brought the Swede, Deacon, Hallback Jack, and Redwood Rosenblum. But they're the cream of the crop. I have heard those names all my life. All except, um, the Swede. Do I know him? Well, he bugs me, but he's good. He'll be my side route. I can use him any place in the whole show. Good. Let's finish our coffee in the living room. I've only got 30 men left since the sawmill people started sabotaging us. Can you make it go with that? Depends on how many long-haired punks you got in the bunch. How many what? The uh, hippies, kids with the long hair and the beards. Well, I haven't got any hippies. But there's one 18-year-old boy up here with long hair. My son, Pete. 
I just tossed him in the drink. Why, Matt? I told him to get his hair cut, and he handed me some lip. I'm sure he'll understand. Well, I don't think he'll understand, but... There's many a man that loves but once, one woman for true in his whole life. Well, for Matt Jury, that woman was Corey Sykes. I was sure hoping whatever happened between them was 18 years buried. They both had a chance now to pick up the pieces and start a new life and forget the past. Matt, I didn't dump you. I didn't want to break up either, no matter how you remember it. There were other reasons. But I don't want to look back. I never asked any other woman to marry me before or since. Matt, you're a timber tramp who's got to be free. Always moving on to new places, new faces. Never backtracking. Well, you didn't give me a chance. Corey, I might have backtracked. You ran off and married the first guy that came along. After all these years, I don't want to quarrel. It's just so good to see you again. I guess you did what you had to do. Maybe I gave you good reason. You know, a man gets older, he... He might not get any smarter, but sometimes he starts using the brains he's been handed. It's kind of late, but... This kind of living looks real nice and cozy to me right now. Next week, next month, maybe. When the challenge of the new job wears off, you and Deacon will be gone. You want to bet? We're not kids anymore, Matt. Don't say anything unless you really mean it.
big push lit a fire under the whole camp right off, and we was back doing what the good Lord made us for, getting lost. Yes, sir, we was sweating and straining for most a month before our body could see a change, but we were stockpiling on a heap of logs, too. We was most ways into the second month before me and Matt got things puffing along on a good schedule. It was a happy camp, too. But the boys was getting a little fretty about a trip to town. And maybe not quite as watchful as they should have been. Watch out for that little farm. You're making it awful tough on the old deacon. Your mom knows she shouldn't have you in here. If you don't watch out, you're never going to get old enough to vote. <laughs> must have figured Corey's operation would be easy to grab off, because we didn't see hide nor hair of them all that time. But we were soon to find out that this pair of dime store dudes wasn't your ordinary run-of-the-mill owner nasties. What they was was a couple of sanctimonious hypocrites that sooner or later would have to be read to right out of the scriptures, and I figured they'd come snooping around pretty quick now. You see, this how everything was getting all settled down nice and calm again. Looks like those sawmill sharks are giving us the once over again. Hey, Corey's got a lot of action going again. It's a new bunch of traps you just brought in. Who's heading them up? A fellow named Matt Jury. What the loggers tell me, he can do it all on his own. He's considered the best camp voice there is. Yeah, I've heard about him. Real fireball. Well, we'll just have to slow him down a little. Now, Joe. I'm as determined as you are to get this outfit in the proper hands for the sake of the lumber industry. No job for a woman. Cora is so far behind, she'll never make the schedule. By the new look of things, she just might make it. How'll she make it? That jury's hiring new men. All the loggers want to work for him. He's paying by the scale book. That's how she'll make it, Artie. A man can make a bundle if he really wants to work. So, Louie, I think you better hustle over and sign up with Corey and make your fortune. Me? I thought I was going to help clobber her show. That's right. You can do that much better working right smack in the middle of it. All these loggers that come out here bring nothing with them except a pack sack and a briefcase. That's right. And I say the bastards ought to go out the same way. With all ethical means available. Oh, yeah. By all means, Artie. Let's always be ethical. <laughs> Just wondering, as the Forest Service... Uh, given an examination lately. Yeah, we can have the Rangers throw them some rules and regulations, aren't you? You're a good news. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. Well, I see you got yourself sheared. You can go to work with the choker setters now. Yeah, thanks a lot. First, I'd like to discuss something. Shoot. I don't think the sawmill gives us a fair count when we deliver. You mean they use the long thumb like all the bastards do? Right. I've got an idea. We might... I'll handle it. You put your good ideas on the end of that mainline cable. Put out your campfires and pick up your trash. Here comes Smokey the Bear. Howdy, boys. <clears throat> I'm Parker. Assigned to the area? U.S. Forestry Service. <laughs> Damn, I thought you was our scoutmaster. I assume you're all familiar with the government regulations for cutting down timber. You've heard of sustained yield? Mister, I was harvesting trees before somebody thought up that fancy expression. Now, don't you worry. I'll run this operation so that you got plenty of saw timber coming along. Page 327 in our manual, the Forest Service Bible. 
Section B, paragraph 8, lines 8, 9, and 10, very clearly state that all logging operations on the North Tungus will be clear-cutting practices only in order to maximize fully the utilization of our resources. Now, now you've been block-cutting here. Yes, sir, that sure as hell is what we're doing. Well, we can't allow that. Either you'll clear-cut here or you won't cut at all. Is that clear? Now, look, you, you can log up on that ridge, and then you can move in here. You know there ain't no decent timber on that ridge. Just snags and scrub and hard to get stuff. And besides that, it's hanging on a mountain that damn near runs straight up and down. And it's in about six inches of dirt on that rock. You cut that timber, and in a year, the whole side of that mountain's gonna wash away. I'm very, very sorry. It's a regulation. So you clean it and reseed it. What we've got to be concerned about, first of all, is getting new trees started. Do you know that just one edition, one edition of a Sunday newspaper with a circulation of one... I'll tell you something else about your Sunday paper. You and your silly regulations ought to be on a comic page. Do you mean to say you refuse to obey a government ordinance? All right, we'll clear the damn ridge. I'll do it myself. Those trees are all rotten, but I'll fall them. Now, if you'd like to come along and supervise, I'll be glad to drop the first tree right on your head and drive you in the ground like a tent stake. Well. Anybody fall trees like that before? This man knows what he's doing. You gotta be able to put him right where you want him. You know, working that steep ground, oh. he's using what we call the Arkansas Drive. You know what that is? Uh -uh. Well, get several of them ready to fall, then you drop one on the whole bunch, and they all go. I guess he really meant he was gonna do it himself. Listen, kid, when Matt says he's going to do it alone, the best thing to do is just stand back and watch. I sure hope that stuttering cook fixes a good supper. Just watching Matt clean off the rest of that mountain got me starved. <laughs> Man, I sure hope Matt's in a good mood. I'd like to get him up for two months' salary. Two months? We've only been here a month. Yeah, but I've trusted him for a month. Why can't you trust me for <laughs> Take him over to the antenna pole. Hey, what are you doing to him? Well, he calls himself a cook. He's going to have to learn. What'd he do? He was going to serve us mashed potatoes without gravy. <laughs> Come on, now! Come on! Have you learned your lesson? Yeah, I'll pick your, I'll pick your gravy any time you want it. Well, uh, down. That's another thing, man. I want to save this country from big muscle-bound gravy eaters like that. I'll pick your, I'll pick your gravy for breakfast. Oh, you're a good man. Oh. <laughs> I like you. All right, I'm done. I always oh. like you. Whiskey made me break my nose. If whiskey gets too close to my nose, I tip her up and down she goes. Whoa.
Yeah, it's the same with the old doll beer donkey days. They're gone too. Do you figure there's any camps left that we haven't hit? Lots of Good, you can join up with us. How many uh, feet of timber you figure you can cut in a day? Maybe 20,000 feet. You're going to be the poorest man in camp. Fellas around here can cut 30,000. The big police can cut 50. No sweat. Yeah, maybe I'll have to speed up some, seeing as I'm such fast company. Maybe. Oh, say, I'd like to show you the picture of my two boys. Uh, they go to school down in San Francisco. I'm not one of those I told you so fellers, but I suspicion something about that big lunker right off. You know, Bart, I'm not mad at you anymore for running me up that pole. All my life I've stuttered, but I don't do it anymore. No I'm completely cured, cured. I don't stutter anymore. No we may have to run you up that pole again. I should have followed him out of the cookhouse right then and there. Shoot, any man that don't like kids and dogs can't be trusted no how. You really plan to go into the Forest Service, huh? Well, 30 years ago, maybe, a forester wasn't much more than a botanist. Well, bug chasers, loggers used to call them. Not anymore, man. Today, they're graduates of accredited forestry schools. There still are some stubborn loggers around who think it's a cop-out to admit that the Forest Service put conservation science into logging and saved the whole lumber industry. Sweet, I have to tell you about the time I had this thing growing on my backside. I, I couldn't see what it was, but it just hurt like hell. I finally had to have a doc cut it off. You know what it was? A forest ranger. Those things can be a real pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the cookhouse. Oh, yeah, he's in there all right. Hiding from the 20th century. Sure never occurred to Matt or me that we had a spy right inside our own logging camp. But all in all, Artie Frazier wasn't finding much to laugh about either. Except when they knew our plans and we didn't know theirs. Yeah, it's a funny country. Kind of new and different, though. Big, wild, raw. Yeah. It's raw. You know, I was lying here thinking. If I was to stay on a couple of seasons, I could send for my boys on summer vacation. Why don't you just go to sleep? It's a good place for young fellas. Deacon, wherever your kids are now, they're not young fellas anymore. They're better off never hearing from you. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I know I'm right. I was a discard, raised from a pup by a mining family in Butte. Once, when I was 16, my old man wrote me a letter. It's the only time I ever heard from him in my life. He sounded real friendly wanted me to write him back. I tried. I tried ten times. What did I have to say? I didn't even know how to get started. Dear sir. Yeah, some men just wasn't created to be husbands and fathers. Or else they get the urge too late. Jury stripped that entire ridge all by himself. 
Now they're back to whacking away at that good timber stronger than ever. You're a born worrier, Artie. Somebody's got to worry. We just have to put a little more pressure on them. time the substantial elements of this industry took power. Oh, your concern for this industry is very touching, Artie. Yeah. You can't even level with yourself. It was your idea to put the Forest Service on their backs. Now, do you want to grab off Corey's operation or not? A gentleman doesn't grab off anything. He simply picks it up quietly and gently. Oh, will you lay off? Of course I want to grab off. Will you lay off that sanctimonious crap? Morally, we're entitled to it. If we can delay them just one week, they'll never make the schedule. Fortunately, there's a long three-day holiday coming up this weekend and that meeting of the Lumberman's Association in Juneau. Yeah. That could be a very profitable weekend. <laughs> I'd give anything if you'd fit in for me at the meeting, Matt. I'd just as soon go to a Sunday school picnic or listen to some damn fool ranger give a campfire talk. I just gotta stay here and work on accounts and payroll and a dozen other things that have piled up. First time in The weather was staying good for us and we were all looking forward to the big holiday in Juneau. Matt and Corey were finding more and more time to get together and less and less need for reasons. It was pretty plain that Matt was happier than I'd seen him in many years. And I don't think he was quite prepared for the prestigious position he was about to be handed. Oh, just, just wait a minute. You mean I got to run the show too? Frank was chairman when he died. I became chairman. That means you'll be the chairman. You're trying to make it tough for me to fill Frank's shoes, Corey. Don't be silly. There's nothing at all to being a chairman. All right, I'll take a stab at it. I just hope it's short and sweet. Thanks. And you'll have plenty of time to do the town after. Yes, sir. From all the signs, it sure seemed like I had done the right thing, bringing Matt and Corey together again. Glad to get to see Alaska, although I don't know if I could ever get used to this much sunlight. I want you to know how grateful I am for the way you've taken over this camp and gotten it moving. I'm beginning to see a future now. Well, we got a good crew. Great. And you were right about Newt. Newt who? Newt Larson, the Swede. He's real good. Oh, yeah, he's good. You know, in many ways, he's, he's very much like you, except... Except what? Well, I was going to say, except with the rough edges polished off. You know, Pete says that he's really bright about... Oh, yeah, he's very bright. I gotta get back to work. Getting logs is what I'm good at. Where are you going? Oh, now that's a stupid question. Well, I'm talking to a stupid tramp. You got something to say? Yeah. You ain't going to Juno. Oh, come on. I got as much right to get drunk as You're anybody. You're gonna stay here and head up the camp until I get back, just in case the sawmill boys decide to pay us a little visit. Promote somebody else. Hey, hey, D! He don't want to be the camp push. I always figured you did. This will give you a couple of days to play it. I just told Swede he'll be the camp push till I get back. Good. I feel better with Newt in charge. I always say, Newt, when they start calling you by your first name, it's time to move on. I'll try to keep him from drinking it dry until you get here. All right, the meeting will come to order. Corey has asked me to represent her here this evening. Now, we got a lot of new business to take care of, so let's uh, get rid of the old business as fast as we can. Mr. Mr. Chairman, how about that uh, transportation for the... Uh, Gentlemen, I consider the support of these four students in forestry school the most important charitable project of the Lumberman's Association. 
Now, as you all know, my mill has contributed generously to this fund. Now, I am prepared to give $1,000 more if you gentlemen will raise the balance to buy and maintain automobiles for these students. Then I'm prepared to give another $1,000. Now, it seems to me if the mill's got so much money to throw around, it could ease up a little on Corey's side. That's not the subject up for discussion, Mr. Chairman. Now, as I was about to say... Well, it's taken you a hell of a long time to say it. Now, my men are waiting for me over at the Red Dog Saloon, and I got some serious drinking to do. I'll be as brief as possible so you can get to your important business. He's rude. Well, as he's you know, crude and he's uncouth. Gives more than I can't understand how a man like that but, uh, is in charge of a meeting well, of such high caliber. The very thought of it makes me nauseous. Now, I will give that extra thousand dollars if you gentlemen will do your share and meet me halfway. Thank you. Artie, you heard the man get over to the Red Dog. What about the sheriff? He'll be there waiting. Now, there was something going on here, and I meant to find out what it was. <laughs> Don't worry, Sheriff. We just want to keep him tied up at that meeting. I should have guessed those two wood beetles would have hatched up one of their schemes. Diabolical is what it was. Divide and conquer. Oldest trick in the books. Get Matt into a spot between a rock and a hard place at the meeting, while Stay keeps me too distracted to advise him out. Yes, sir. Diabolical is what I call Thank you, Your Majesty. Oh, you girl? Yeah. Me boy. Oh, good. Hey, this could be serious. Thank you. Now, I, I simply have to know exactly how many of you are planning to attend the convention in Spokane this year. I, I don't know exactly how many pennants or, or name plates or candy stripe hats to order. And speaking from a public relations point of view, I think it's very important that we be recognized as a group representing the, the honest and pioneering spirit of Alaska. Bullshit, let's get on with the meeting. Come on, come on. Stop yeah. that bottle. Yeah. Let me go, Redwood. Now, now, as you all know, we're going to wear those special made red jackets at the convention. An excellent suggestion was made that we have the words Alaska Lagers uh, printed on the lapels. And then another suggestion was that we have the printing in much larger letters on the back, you know, across the shoulders. Now, can anyone think of a better place? On your... Come on, step up. I mean it! Let's go. I'm going to tell you all about it! Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. For the next hour, drinks around the house. Dave for the bill. For in a sinner's short life, a fight is just another battle. But a free drink is an event, especially in the Red Dog Saloon. And when I spotted the dude sneak eyeing us, well, I didn't need no brick falling on me to figure out what was going on. Hey, bartender. You having a little special doings in the back room? Sheriff always drinks back there. If you don't like to throw cold water on the fun out front. Who's that feller with him? That's Shorty Fraser. What does he do? He's part owner of the sawmill with Joe Richards. Fraser wants us to keep Matt Jerry from getting back from the meeting. Uh, he's tough. I know where we can get a couple baseball bats. Good. We can wait in the alley and get us a home run or two on his head. All right. Now, the last thing I would have believed was Matt Jury running some gall dang lumberman's meeting or other. When those two sawmill dudes went right along with the meeting arrangement, so nice and easy, I should have smelled a rat. But the truth is, I was momentarily distracted. Well, sir, there's only one way to handle a couple of would-be toughs, now that I knew their game plan. Now, these two look like pretty good candidates for the Alcoholics Anonymous, but there was other ways to sober them up, too. <laughs> Mighty quick, too. I 
know that most of you have been smarting under the restrictive government timbering regulations. And I say we've got to present a solid front. Now, if I can get all your signatures on that petition, I'll go straight to the governor and I'll demand that he... Beings adjourn until tomorrow. Just a minute. Tomorrow is Saturday. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. And tomorrow is my Sabbath. And meetings adjourn till Sunday. You can't do that either. Sunday's my Sabbath. I suggest we meet again on Monday. There ain't gonna be no meeting on Monday, neither. That's our Sabbath. We're gonna be drunk the whole dang day. Hold it! All right, you've had it. Everybody back to the boat. What's going on here? Uh, well, nothing, Sheriff. We're leaving peaceful. Uh, the boys are homesick. They want to get back to the camp. Hey, I'm not, I'm not leaving until I finish my drink. It's finished. All right, let's go. Peace, brother. That man jury is crude. Utterly unprincipled. Yeah, getting so you can hardly trust anybody these days. Also, he's a lot smarter than we gave him credit for. Now what? You can work the Louie. Louie? Louie's only a timber follower. What can Louie do? He can drop a tree in the wrong place at exactly the right time, like on Matt Jury's skull. Or oh, ethically, of course. Ethically. Bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoice and bringing in the sheaves. Now, daydreaming is a big part of any old man's life and the most fun. But daydreaming can be downright dangerous, too. Look out! Who dropped this tree? I wasn't counting noses. I was just ducking and praying. I think that new man, Pack Sack Louie, was cutting here. Damn it, sweet. Keep your eye on these timber beasts. I can't keep my eye on the whole show. No? Well, then try keeping your mind on it. Whatever the hell that means. Somebody get a saw over here and hack this thing off. Thank you, Lord, for saving my life. You better thank the lash up that made the canopy on this cat. That's what saved your miserable hide. Almost ruined my hat. Uh, it's all his show. I tried to tell him an idea the other day. He hasn't listened to an idea since someone told him he could cut down a tree and make a buck. Well, I don't think we get an honest scale from the mill when we deliver our logs. My idea was I thought we might call in the forest service. And then they could scale the truck for us. Yeah, and they can, uh, they can scale the trucks for you. The sawmill boys can't argue the board feed if the scale book's been figured by Smokey the Bear. Well, I ain't saying that Swede Larson wasn't a nice fella, but he sure wasn't above stealing somebody else's good idea, especially when it made him look good in the boss lady's eyes. I can't tell you yet, but, well, I want you to know that I really appreciate all the consideration you've given Pete. Yeah, well, a pretty sharp boy. It's not easy for him mixing with the men, being so young and the son of the boss and everything. I don't worry about him. He's got a lot of character. Comes by it pretty honestly. Thank you, sweet. That was a very nice thing for you to say. I'm gonna try an idea on you. Might save us a lot of trouble at the mill. I uh, shoot. Well, they never agree with our scale book. So why don't we call in the Forest Service? Have them scale everything. That, that would make you it official. Tell Sweet I don't need his ideas. When we deliver to the mill, I'll see we get what's coming to us, including the raft you lost. But I'll do it my way. Sure as glory, the showdown between Matt and Swede was a coming. 
It was just a question of time. With all the pressure, Matt wasn't in the best of moods these days, and I was sure hoping Swede would walk a little lighter on But I guess I was just daydreaming on my part. Ah, well, this show's moving like greased lightning. Now that we got these big skidders rolling, there's other ways to make it work too, but Matt doesn't want to hear about it. Yeah, I noticed he's kind of been nipping at your tail. Yeah, what's bugging him? He sprung me out of jail so I could work this show. Why? We never were very friendly. If he brought me up here just so we could get to be enemies, he's doing it all right. But Matt's sort of like this, this big skidder here. Once you get it headed downhill and get up a full head of steam, there ain't no stopping it till it gets where it's going. Well, in all the years we've been tramping together, I know that his bark's a hell of a lot worse than his bite, but I'll tell you something. I'm not gonna take any more pushing around. Then kablooey it happened. With everything else going on, we short figured Fraser and Richard's meanness. And that's when they hit us where it hurt the most. The new road suite was building and our heavy equipment. just crippling up the machinery. They wanted to do likewise for the key man, me. everything. Now, keeping an eye on the men is part of what you're getting paid for. If you'd have been checking closer, instead of shining up to the boss lady, that would never have happened. Get off my back, will you? I figure the smartest thing she ever did was dump you 20 years ago. You just let your mouth overload your ass. <laughs> I'm 
And all I have on the big push. Except maybe a uh, hundred bucks. Come on, come on, man. Come on, come on, man. This had to happen. I've seen it coming for a long time. To hell with you. To hell with the whole camp. I'm going into town and get drunk for three months, and I don't want to see any of you in my saloon. He hasn't even turned around in 24 hours. Well, he's got to drop like a 10-ton boulder soon. Uh, I'll feel much better when he does. You know, this whole affair holds much broader implications than just Corey's operation. If they meet this deadline, every logger in Alaska is going to get more nervy, and I'm getting tired of being Mr. Good Guy to these loggers, Artie. Well, look who's worried me. Right will prevail. That whole operation is grinding to a standstill. Well, maybe. But I can't feel secure as long as that guy is still upright. We're never going to make it, Pete. Those truckloads are just getting smaller and farther apart all the time. We'll make it, Mom. Sweet's pushing just as hard as he can. I know, but there's something missing. Oh, what's missing? Man, I just don't dig. What's so special about him? You would if you knew him better. Matt has a, a knack for holding a crew together, making the men push harder to keep up with him. He knows how to put pace and excitement into a show, Pete. They don't come any better. I'm damn tired of everyone telling me just how great Matt Jury is. Funny. What? The way Matt and the kids seem to get their hair up with one another. What's so funny about that? Because they're really a lot alike in a lot of ways. There's a reason for that, sweet. I, uh... I guess you're going into town to find Matt, huh? You're damn right. As soon as I finish this tank, I'm gonna go tell Jerry. Not everyone thinks he's so great. Well, uh, I'd like to talk to you for a minute, son. When uh, your mom was a little girl, I was logging boss for her dad down in Washington. I saw your mom grow up from a, a little girl to become a beautiful woman. And uh, then... One day, this young fella come to work for us. Well, him and your mom fell head over heels in love. I, I'd never seen two happier kids in my life. But uh, he was a timber tramp, wild as a March hare, never had a family or a home of his own. Then. Uh, 
One day they had a quarrel. It was a bad one. And he just up and left. Was that guy Matt Jury? Yeah. And he's still in love with your ma, even to this day. But he is a mighty independent man. But he's a good man, too, son. How come nobody ever told me? Well, when you get old, there are a lot of things in this whole life that's mighty hard to explain. Deacon, is there more to this story? Matt Jury was your mom's first love, and she's still mighty fond of him after all this time. But the important thing now is that your mom needs Matt to save this here logging camp from being taken away from her. Deacon, but what happened? What... Now, that's all. I, I've got nothing more to say. Now, you, you go ahead and do whatever it is you've got to do. Thanks, Deacon. up to me to keep things going. Shucks, this wasn't the first camp I'd put back on his feet, and God willing, it wouldn't be the last. Oh, when I was young and handsome, it was my heart's delight to go to balls and parties and stay out late at night. Was at a ball, she met me. I asked her for a dance. She knew I was a logger by the way I wore my pants. <laughs> Truck shop. Come in, truck shop. No, this is a truck shop. Go ahead. This is a digging. I'm riding Miller's truck. I think my brakes are failing. Why, uh, those brakes are brand new, Deacon. Pump them. Pump them hell. There ain't nothing to pump. time to pray now, but this is the deacon riding this here truck. Do you hear me? Attention all traffic on nine mile grade. Everybody clear the road. I'm riding Miller's rig and she's running wild. The deacon, this is a truck shop. I think there's traffic in front of you. I'll stay with it as long as I can. But clear that damn road. Chew. 
For a minute there, I thought I heard the squeaky gates of heaven opening. I lost my hat. I'll go find it for you, Deacon. Don't move till I get back. Sure hope it didn't ride that truck down. Well, living through that runaway truck was quite an event. But you know, it was kind of forgotten along the wayside with the return of the big bush and young people. Matt, Matt, thanks for coming back. Well, who else is gonna get the job done here? I've got the knack, right? I'm gonna clear that whole damn mountain all by myself. No, you're not. I'm gonna help you. We'll never know what happened in town, but it was pretty plain how Corey felt about Matt's return. Well, here we were, a whole logging camp again, and young Pete took up trying his dangers to be like Matt in every way. And most of the camp knew why. Well, that's pretty good, Punk, but that ain't a day's work. Surprise, surprise. Deacon, can we make the deadline at the mill? Shoot, when Matt Jory can't thump them sawmill dudes, I'll eat my hat. You suppose you and Matt will ever settle down? I mean, when the job's finished, will you and Matt be staying on? Honey, you and Matt is the closest thing to a real family I've ever had in my whole life. Nothing would please me more than you two getting together. Do you think he cares for me? I mean, like I care. Well, he's a mighty proud man with a deep hurt way inside that's lasted for 18 years. Uh, and I never told him about young Pete. You begged me not to, remember? I wouldn't want him to stay because he feels responsible. I want him to stay because he loves me. Soft, sweet voice again, isn't it, boys? <laughs> Wait a hear the man off your dead butts and onto your dying feet. Get over it! Oh, let's go home! We were still half a million feet short of the 10 million feet we needed. And the big push was everywhere, taking a strain on every loose end of the operation. Stop those damn trees downhill toward the lead! Yes, sir, the going got hard and then got harder. On the men, the machines, and especially on the hats. Whatever worked for the big push, young Pete just took up with the same. <laughs> sure was hard on hats, all right. Things were moving real well. Matt and Sweet were working as a team, and Redwood was dreaming some fool scheme to bottle ice water for the lower 48. <laughs> Yes, sir, things were nice and peaceful. Too peaceful, I guess. Hey, by the rigging! Slack the whole back! I come ahead with it! Five X wires and a, 
the triplets, Mick. You're gonna be all right, Hallback. No chance. But it's the way I always want to go. If I just had to go. <laughs> and I never figured I'd, I'd do it sober. Hey, Matt. Matt, I'm, I'm sure glad I got to see Alaska. The rigging stopped. It'll never stop the shawl for one man. Saying the blues. But if you had to go, this is the way you choose. The end for new country. And a swig of rot gut booze. I'm picking the minute he tramped with to go with me, take him to Juno for burial. Well, come on, you heard all back. You don't stop the show for just one man. of me, but if you've got just a minute, I'd like to put in a good word for this friend of ours who's on his way up there to knock on your gate. Don't let his size fool you. He's a lot of man. His name is Hallback Jack Riley. He won't cut much of a figure with those big, famous, real smart folks you got up there, but he can sure liven things up and hand everybody a chuckle now and then. I don't reckon he can play a harp, but he's real good on a musical song if you got one handy. And I sure hope you like Irish jigs because he's a dandy at them. Now, Lord, I know that in your good book it says, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Well, Hallback was never much at studying his scriptures. So, when you pull out the big scale book, to call the names on the daily roll. Please remember, there's just one worldly goal. Before you in judgment, in his old cork boots, Jack's gonna stand. Blogger, you put down here to harvest the timber from the lands. So Lord, please don't judge Hallback by his sins, but by the calluses on his hand. Sweet! Make sure you get good full loads. We can't make rafts without logs. Now, you could tramp with a man all your born days and never know him except him by nickname. And the proper respect was to get done what Hallback would have wanted most, to save Corey's logging camp. Another one for Hallback. Roll it out of here. Every man Jack took on an extra strain because we had a deadline to make. And that's the way Hallback would have won. <laughs>
guess there's one raft that ain't gonna break up. It'll move out in the morning. Sure wish Holback was here to see it. glory finally come busting like the sun out of the dark clouds and there was enough proud in the camp to make its own shadow there was just one hitch the big push insisted on finishing the job alone well mr chairman forget that i just brought in a shipment of logs for corey sykes they're on schedule so don't try to stall on that score and we got them all scaled down to the last inch in this book, so don't be using the long thumb. We overloaded already. Got more logs than we know what to do with. I, I can't prove anything, but I should have kicked your butt up on your left shoulder a long time ago. That's for Hallback Jack. I can't prove anything no, against not you either. Not necessary, not necessary at all. We'll be very happy to accept your shipment. I'll make a check out for you right now. Make it for another 20 grand for that log raft that broke up. And make it cash. The men are waiting to get paid off so they can shove on. Well, now that's against our father. Of course, cash. Yes, sir, the good Lord never did himself no prouder than when he dressed his mountains in the finery of his forests. But when he made the timber tramps, he stirred in a mite too much stubborn and a heap of pride. Matt, are you sure you have to go? I won't beg you to stay. The Lord knows I'd done my best bringing Matt back together with Corey and the boy. But there we was, right back where we'd been a thousand times before, leaving, and only older. A lot of them will come back, and you won't have any trouble getting a crew now that the word's out. But not you. I never backtracked. You said so yourself, Corey. I guess I'd... Matt had the choice of two roads he could follow. He could take the turn his heart told him to, or follow his feet the same way we'd always done. And nobody had to tell me what lonely was. Thanks, Matthew. Well, it's, it's like they say when... when they start calling you by your first name, it, it's time to move on. Sometimes the way you feel don't have a lot to do with the decisions you have to make. Kid, and you've studied a lot and you talk real smart, but let me give you a bit of advice. Don't ever become a timber tramp. Many was a time during all the years we tramped together that using reverse psychology on Matt was the only answer. He was a man that couldn't be pushed. Not even an inch. And acting like I wanted us to leave was the best way I knew of getting Matt to stay. Stubborn bastard. <laughs> yeah. Life's a long road. Times have changed, but in a lot of ways, you and I haven't. Corey knows that when she needs you, you'll be there. You know, we really didn't get finished with that job. And, and you know, Corey's kid, he still don't know his butt from a bull block about logging. Will the tramp ever be back, Ma? In a lot of ways, he's never been gone. Big, well, what would you say if, uh, if I ask you to go back with me for one more season? Partner, I never thought you'd ask. <laughs> Pilot. We're going back. <laughs>